everyone out there in YouTube land. This is Jen and Christian's with me and we're doing kind of a sad episode today. So if you want to hear our thoughts and our in memoriam to Sid Haig and hear our thoughts on the House of a Thousand Corpses, stick around. <laughs> to some really sad news. I think every horror fan had woke up to some really sad news. Uh, Sid Haig passed and it was quite it was quite, it, I guess it wasn't completely shocking, but it kind of was because the last news I had heard that he was turning the corner, his wife posted that he was doing better, and um, unfortunately he succumbed to the worst, and it really sucks, and everybody's just really, really bummed in the horror mm -hmm. community. It's a big loss for the horror community. Did you find out as soon as you woke up yep. this morning? Yeah, um, yeah, it just was, it just was really, really sad. He was beloved. He had an, an acting career spanning oh, well over so many decades. He was in vaudeville, was he not? I believe he was. Yeah, yeah. And I believe it, he started in the silent era. Yeah, and he, he did, and uh, it was at 60 when he really gained his big fame as Captain Spaulding. People really seemed to latch on to his character, but he did other movies before yeah, that. he did a lot of movies before that, and he did a lot of great movies after that. Yeah, he really did, and one of the things that's really cool about him, Rob, Zombie posted a memory of him the, this morning and uh, said that, you know, he, uh, one of the things he loved about him is that, you know, he was still going to horror conventions and he loved the fans as much as the fans loved him and he, he was there. He's, and everyone I've ever heard who's gotten his autograph said he was just lovely to, you know, sometimes it's not a good idea to meet your heroes. This is one case where it was okay to meet your hero because he lived up to the expectations larger than life and a hell of a nice guy on yeah. top of that. So, yeah, it just, it just was really sad and we were not planning on doing, well, I was eventually going to do this movie somewhere down the road, but I think it's fitting. This is kind of our little tribute to Sid Egg. Wherever you are, Sid, I hope there's a lot of fried chicken, and I hope you're in peace. Yeah. And um, so uh, this is for you, buddy. So we are going to be uh, reviewing, or, well, not reviewing, our little vlog on A House of a Thousand Corpses and our thoughts. And Rob Zombie, even without the Sid Egg, is very controversial in the horror community. Yeah. He is a very, um, a very controversial director. Director. Um, some people love him. Some people hate him. We love him. Some people, some people like one or two of his movies and think the rest of it's shit. I have heard more than one time people saying that he's just hill for hill horror for hillbilly white trash. He knows his he knows his audience. Yeah. Um. And 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 most people say he's had one trick up his hat this whole time, and that trick is getting tired. We have not seen the three from hell. We're, we're doing it in October. We're very curious to see what's going on. In October, we'll see what that one's going to be like in October. Um, I know Sig said Haig because he was he wasn't in the best of health. That is why his role was so diminished, and why we have uh, Richard Brake in his kind of replacing his role. He's in the movie, but a lot less. In fact, Rob Zombie said basically they shot all his scenes in one day, yeah. and he kind of Lionsgate knew, but kind of turned you know kind of looked a blind eye and let them come to the studio for one day. And Rob said he wasn't feeling great that day, but he still gave it his all. That's just the kind of character he was yeah. um but but yeah but house of a thousand corpses is where we start our venture with rob zombie it was his first film and even back then people were very divisive of this movie it's kind of become a lot more beloved than it was when it was initially first released yeah like i was doing some research and i was like why does this have one star on Rotten Tomatoes? Because every fucking critic review of that time hates this movie. And still a lot of them do to this yeah, day. Yeah, a lot of people still hate the, hated it then. Like, I don't, And I don't see why. Like, is this movie a little rough around the edges? Yes, it's his first movie. There's some ver There are some cheap, uh, cheap little bits in the movie. And cheap it's, is another word. There, budge, there was a bare bones production. Mm -hmm. And he was going all us, uh, all us 70s movie, so it kind of fit. Um, yeah, there's some, this isn't, this, this movie is very rough around the edges and does have some problems, but overall, for it's, I would say it's one of the better directorial debuts I've ever seen. It's yeah. a really excellent film. Yeah, I remember, because I was there at the time, and you were too, but you were too young, um, and I remember just not getting why the hate. I've never understood. Like I said, it's kind of become more beloved, and it's a, it's definitely has a cult following, but at the time, it was not beloved, and it has a lot of fun. 
and we have a lot of horror icons. We had Bill Mosley, and we we hadn't seen Bill Mosley. Yeah, in a while. like ever. It's it's arguable that this is the movie that kind of made him be noticed as a horror icon. Like, yeah, everyone knows Chainsaw Two, but at the time, people hated Chainsaw Two, and he didn't really do that many horror movies before this film. Yeah, it kind of gave him a new resurgence. He was always working. Don't get us wrong. Oh but yeah. It just this one was kind of like, oh yeah, Bill Mosley. Yeah, he's awesome. And the one thing that I do here, no matter if you love Rob Zombie, hate Rob Zombie, or however you feel, everyone loves that goddamn clown. Yeah. Chicken, fried chicken and gasoline. I know a lot of people who hate Rob Zombie movies, but still fucking love Captain Spaulding as a character. Because he's such both a excellently portrayed and excellently written character. He He's such a wonderful addition to the film, and I don't think the film would be nearly as memorable if it weren't for his, or if he weren't in the movie. Exactly. Um, one of the things uh, that Rob Zombie talked about, he said that they wanted to make uh, Captain Spaulding basically a lovable asshole, and that's pretty much what you got. Yeah. He insults everybody all the time, and he's kind of a dick to everybody, but he does it in such a way that it's just so charming you can't get pissed off. Yeah. That's more Bill Mosley's job. Oh, yeah, like, it's it's amazing that a character that I counted, I forgot, he's only in four scenes in this whole movie, and yet he's such an iconic character, even when the, before Rejects came out, he was still considered an icon. Yeah, everyone, I remember even back then, that was like the one positive I think I heard, whether, no matter what people were saying or who was saying it, is they did love that goddamn clown, and yeah. he just, he steals the show, and like Christian said, he doesn't have a lot of runtime in this movie, but he has quite a little bit of runtime and like I said there was a lot of horror icons I think for this movie it's its biggest detriment and I actually I know everyone's gonna boo Jen but I actually don't think she's a horrible actress she was a little rough in this one it was her first film um but a lot of people don't like Sherry Moon Zombie and I don't get why I have stated many times on streams and on this channel I don't think she's a bad actress she's gotten she's better a, I don't think she's an awful actress and I think Baby is when she at her strongest because she because this role was literally written for her. Yeah, in, but a lot of people mind. don't like Baby. I, I think she works really good for the role. She's supposed to be kind of an annoying little raver chick. Yeah. You know, she's not, you know, so she does that role really well. Yeah, and I also like, and there's a lot of details. Rob Zombie is very much a detail oriented. You wouldn't think that he would be kind of the, the uh, director that would, you would think he would play fast and loose, but actually everything he stated in that movie, every little, even just little things that you, you're I might not even catch was there for a reason. Mm -hmm. It was all to enhance the story and to, and to do a thing. And I like that. You would never think that, you know, just from the perception of Rob Zombie, you would think he would be fast and loose and be like, you know, let's run with this and see what's going to stick to the wall. But actually, no, he's a very detail oriented. Whatever you think of the guy, he's very detail oriented. I was listening to his commentary before we started the actual review. And one of the things he said in his commentary, he was getting mad because he noticed little mess ups and he was getting mad at him. And it's stuff that most of the movie goers Yeah, it's stuff I never noticed until he mentioned it. You yeah, know? yeah, and I guess that's all directors to some point, but I just wouldn't think Rob Zombie, I think he would be more like, hey, man. Yeah, no, it, but it's a really excellently put together fi uh, film, you know. I, it, I would, it has probably the, my favorite opening sequence to any movie of the 2000s, possibly any horror movie ever. That fucking opening's excellent. Yeah, everybody loves that opening. And you know, an another thing about that is this was, like you said, 2003, and this was kind of one of the first movies where we were going back to that. It was a different time back then. Pete. Well, I'm making it sound like this is the 1800s. Well, it kind of was a different time, it at least in the horror sphere, you know. In the horror community, uh, in the horror sphere, it was because we were kind of getting away from this the gritty, grindhouse feel that Rob Zombie does so well. This was kind of a breath of fresh air. We were getting things like Scream and things like that, which is fine. It's It, it's, it all has its place in horror, but it was just kind of nice. We hadn't gotten a dirty, gritty kind you need to feel like you take a shower and just really dark, gory thing. We hadn't seen that in a yeah, while. Yeah, it was mostly like PG-13s. We hadn't had a full-blown like balls-to-the-wall fucking R-rated grindhouse movie in ages. Yeah, and Rob Zombie came along and said, I'm going to give you guys one because that's the kind of movies he loves. Yeah, and then we, we, we like I said, a lot of detail. The Manson. Cause, you yeah, know. yeah, yeah, all the fucking connections back to the Manson. Like, yeah, I know a lot of people love to poke out fun. Like, Rob Zombie's a obsessed with Charles Manson. Maybe yeah, he is. is. He's a pretty
pretty obsessed with Charles Manson, and he doesn't. He wears it on his sleeves. Otis is basically a fill-in for Charles Manson in this movie. Basically, and Bill Mosley is great, and I would say Sherry Moon Zombie was pretty damn good in this. All she, of them are great. She didn't do as much as Captain Spaldley or Spaulding or Bill Mosley, but you know, she was working, and I think she gets progressive. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. I think she's getting progressively better with each film she does. I know everyone jokes that like it must be in their marriage contract that she has to be in every movie. It probably is, but still, you know, I don't, uh, yeah, does he use her a bit too much? Could Did she need to be in Halloween too? No, but... But the horse of symbolism. I know, right? But I do think, you know, movies like this, she works fine. I think she was good in 31. I think she was good in Lords of Salem. And I think she was legitimately even better. I thought she gave some really great performances in Halloween, and I know a lot of people are going to roll their eyes, but I think this, the scene she has with Michael, you know, as a child are very touching and very hard. Are heartwarming, and I like the fact she's playing, uh, you know, she's not playing a sainted kind of mother, a Betty Crocker kind of mother. She's playing a mother that's made some, you know, maybe hasn't made the best choices in her life, but uh, she loves her kids. You know, she might be a stripper, but she's a stripper who loves her kids, and she brings that humanity to the role. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I don't think people give her enough credit. She's, like I said, she's grown into the role of actress, but I think she's, I think she's perfectly good. Um, our cast of characters are interesting in A House of a thousand corpses um our victims at least we have the guy from the office rain wilson i think so we have chris hardwick who i always forget is in this movie yeah and they kind of play these goofy horror nerds who are writing a book about you know odd roadside attractions that you see driving across america and they happen to stop uh, it, <laughs> captain spaulding's famous murder ride yeah murder ride murder ride. um yeah no like uh, the, it, I do like how this movie, because a lot of people, especially at the time, I think nowadays a lot of people have kind of realized what he was doing, but a lot of people back in the day complained, oh, our main characters are so unlikable, nobody cares about them. It's a horror movie, and it's kind of purposely done that way. What, you know, there's a reason we're introduced to Captain Spaulding before them. Yeah, um, uh, they're perfectly fine. They're girlfriends, yeah, they're, but that's kind of what a horror movie is. Somebody said that, well, you know, whether you're rooting for the villains or you're rooting for the villains, victims as long as you care about one side or the other it's a good horror movie yeah 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 totally. and uh, and i i happen to agree with that and you're not too sad when when the girls you know come meet their fates it's 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 very cool they're kind of bitches but it works for the movie yeah. it really does and then of course we have uh, and we have mama also uh mama firefly played by karen black and you know we've seen her in quite a few things yeah burn and, offerings anyone yeah you know rob zombie kind of like to use a lot of the same um, uh, you know he likes to use certain actors and you can see why and she really brings a great thing you can see how baby became what she became and I like that she's a nymphomaniac I love that she's like this super like southern kind of white little white trash fucking nymphomaniac I really like that how, that how they do that yeah I do too and she wants to kill you but she wants to sleep with you and then kill you or maybe the other way around yeah. you know for a little bit of a kink a little variety we all like the yeah. We also have Grandpa, who is the greatest. Yeah, we have Grandpa, and originally he was supposed to be the killer, and the the, the Doctor Satan was going to be a hoax. But Rob Zombie, while he was working, kind of changed the story as it was progressing. Which we'll talk about the ending, because yeah, the ending is interesting. Yeah, they're, they're they're very interesting and I can't imagine any horror fan who has not seen A House of a Thousand Corpses. It's kind of, you know, I can hear some people say, I guess we should talk about this before we hit spoilers, is it overrated? And no. It, yeah. Okay, I will, okay, I will say, is it Rob Zombie's best movie? No. I would say, give that to Devil's Rejects, which we'll probably talk about before we hit October, but I do, I do think that that movie is superior but I still would say this uh, that uh, House of a Thousand Corpses is a fucking masterpiece and one of the best first films out of a director. I I think it's an absolute bl uh, blast. I think it's kind of the shot in the arm horror needed in the early 2000s. I would argue that if it weren't for this movie kind of breaking uh, breaking the trails, we wouldn't have directors like Eli Roth be, uh, be accept as accepted as they became, you know? I would agree with all a Christian said. Um, would I say it's a masterpiece? I, I don't know if I'd go that far to say, but I would say it's definitely one. Whether 
whether you end up loving it or hating it, Booze and Ghouls, I definitely think it's one you need to see. If you're going to call yourself a fan of horror, you definitely need to see. And, uh, you know, I think that is a mark of a good director when it's controversial. When oh, he, yeah. You know, of course, that could have just be part of his shticks, but I, I like that you can get... Rob Zombie is one thing. No matter who I talk to in the horror community, people have very strong feelings about him and his movies, and he, he's interesting. And is he a one-trick pony? I, no, I think he has a sort of, sort of stylistic choices, and yes, he does white trash hillbilly rednecks really well. And I know some people. I know your aunt, the whore, the horror said that uh, you know it kind of, kind of a depends little bit of him goes depends, a long way. Depends on the movie, but I would say for House of a Thousand Corpses and Rejects, it works fine for the style of movie. I, 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 I always say, who does it better? I mean, and that's part of our white trash hillbilly victims and and villains are. Uh, that's a, that's part of horror's long tradition. You know, there's there's a there's a niche for it in the horror community where that's very popular, mm -hmm. and that he does it really well. And if you do something really well, of course you're going to want to do it. Um, I, I I I don't, uh, but I think that this is definitely a movie every horror fan needs to see. It is great. I do. I will say that the Captain Spaulding performance uh, given by uh, by uh, by Sid Haig is a masterpiece. Yes. Because I like Christian said. I do not think this movie would be half as memorable without him. He's what makes the movie. There's a lot of great gems. In this movie, don't get me wrong, and I love a lot of things, but th but he's just like that extra little magic that makes mm -hmm. the movie really good to fucking phenomenal. He's the what you really watch. Everyone, he's an asshole, and you love him. That speaks volumes right there. Exactly. So yeah, so I I, I definitely think that this is it, this is definitely something people should see, and I do think Sid Haig's performance is a masterpiece. And I'm sorry we lost him today. I yeah, really yeah, am. It's a real yeah. it's a real sad for the whole horror community. And I guess that's all. All we should talk about before we hit spoilers. Do you have any big problems in this movie? Because we basically have spent this entire video sucking this movie's dick. Is there any big problems this movie has? Because there is some. There are some, but there's problems in every movie. Are um, no, for me, no. I remember when I saw this movie when it came out, I fucking loved it. I loved it. But I'm, again, I'm one of those people that I kind of dig most of Rob Zombie's stuff. I, I dig it. Um, I, no, I don't really have any, because the, 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 even the, the problems that we have make sense in the story-wise. And then I love the ending. Oh, God, the fucking ending. Uh, maybe I'm biased because it's that goddamn ending. I will, run, Rabbit, run! I will say this. Th I feel this movie's biggest problem is this was Rob zombies showing off, hey, I know my fucking shit, everyone laughing at oh, a, a rock star's doing a horror movie, hey, fuck you, I know my shit. I feel like this is what this Rob Zombie was trying to say, and that's in the end, and that's a big thing with the ending is him really flexing his horror knowledge. And I do feel, at some point, it, at some points, it does become kind of a hindrance to the movie of just making constant references and homage to horror movies. I love when the movie does that, but I can see where people have issues with it. I guess I do have an issue while I love most of the soundtrack, Brick House was kind of a bad idea. Rob Zombie's <laughs> cover of Brick House. That's what I Brick mean. Brick House itself, when it's put in the movie, works well, but his cover at the end credits is pretty bad. It's yeah. not It's not a horrible cover or anything, but it was an odd choice. I remember a lot of people were making fun of it even back then, and when we, were, when we watched the movie today, the credits rolled, and I'm like, oh, yeah. I forgot about this. <laughs> yeah, so, but but overall, no, I, I don't see any flaws with this movie. I actually really like it. I always go back and forth between do I love uh, House of a Thousand Corpses or Devil's Rejects more, I, and I'm a fan of Halloween. Well, we'll talk Rejects next week, but... Yeah. I, 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 I guess let the rating real quick before we go into the thing. A+. If, plus. Agreed. If it isn't obvious, A+. Plus. This movie's fucking phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah, it, all the performances are great. All the little touches. There are so many Easter eggs in this movie. If you're a person who likes to hunt for Easter eggs, there's a shit ton of mm -hmm. Easter eggs in this movie. And the DVD itself has the bloopers in the menu screen. Yes, I was cool. about to say that. Even if you don't like this movie and you want to celebrate Sid Haig but don't want to sit through the whole movie, pop in your DVD of it and watch the goddamn menus because it's fucking glorious. This is the only movie I know of where the goddamn DVD menus has bloopers. Mm -hmm. It's really it's really goddamn fun. And if you don't know what I'm talking, find yourself a copy of the movie on DVD and watch the motherfucker. It's awesome. And with all that out of the way, Boos and Ghouls, I can't imagine any horror fan who has not seen this movie yet, but if for whatever reason you have missed out on A House of a Thousand Corpses, definitely do what Christian says. Go out and get yourself a Blu-ray, get yourself a DVD. And um, do they have... 
VHS is better. I don't. I actually think this is one of the last movies to come out on VHS. If it did, if if you can find, go on eBay and get your. I would say get yourself it on VHS, but that's just a perfect. But the VHS doesn't have Spalding menus. Uh, personal preferences, but definitely get yourself and watch this movie, and don't watch our spoilers because we're about to hit spoilers. Now it's time for the fun part. Uh, this ending is, like I was saying, this is Rob Zombie flexing his horror knowledge. So you might be wondering, why is this movie called House of a Thousand Corpses? I There's only it. like four corpses in this movie so far. <laughs> and Fish Boy. And Fish Boy. Well, yeah. So four and a half corpses in this movie. Well, that's because the, the fly, uh, fireflies live next to a cemetery. You could say their house is by a cemetery. <laughs> Get it? Get it? And underneath said cemetery is about a thousand corpses along with the titular Dr. Satan. Oh, oh, can I ask a question? Is the street they live on Fulci Street? Maybe, <laughs> possibly. And, who, and Dr. Satan is a doctor who, who randomly speaks German for seemingly no reason <laughs> other than to reference House by the Cemetery, which has a, which is famous for its ending, <laughs> where a German Nazi doctor randomly speaks German and it has no setup, just like in this movie. Spoilers! I know, right? <laughs> oh, fuck. I love this ending. It's so good. I do, too. It's so fucking good. It's a what-the-fuck moment, but it works so well. Yeah, and I believe every horror convention you will not... You Every horror convention anyone's ever gone to since this movie's come out has been someone has uttered the wonderful line, Run, rabbit, run! Yeah. Yeah, it's it, just it, awesome. It's, th this ending is so fantastic. It and is. I love I love this running motif. I guess it can't happen anymore. But, uh, but I love this running motif throughout all of Rob Zombie's movies, or at least most of them, of a character walking down the road and every time you're just hoping the Captain Spaulding's going to show up in a car. Yeah. I love how this movie ends, and I love how they set up that Captain Spaulding and the Fireflies are connected so, uh, really early on without uttering a single thing. The fact that the Fireflies have a bunch of chickens and, and Spaulding fries up at the gas station and he sent them, uh, sent the kids that way. So I love the little uh, setups. Slide of hand. Yeah, I, I love the little slide of hand sh uh, setups. The fact that, yeah, these two people, these groups are connected. You just won't find out how until the end of the movie and really until Devil's Rejects. The ending, what I like about it, it sort of reminds me of the ending of Nightmare on Elm Street because, you know, you're kind yeah, of on a kinda. dream sequence. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I I really love this ending. It it, it I love the little little nod to you know to, to house. We love House by the Cemetery here. If we haven't made that clear it many times, I love that movie. We so. both do. It's an awesome, and I like that Rob Zombie really tips his hat to it. It it's just so smart and so fun. And you have to be a, a hardcore horror fan to go. Oh, I love. Well, we'll talk talk more about this when we do rejects. But I love the fact. If for anyone who doesn't know, look up an interview. I think. Rob Zombie did relatively recently talking about how he wanted to bring Dr. Satan back for Devil's Rejects. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a great interview. Definitely, if you can, find it on the internet and listen to it because it's awesome. Mm -hmm. It really is. But yeah, this is just a great movie. It's an A+. Plus. I loved it then. I love it now. I am super. It was really, it was bittersweet watching the movie today knowing that we lost that. we lost Captain Spaulding. But we always have him on the, on the celluloid. And it, what a great legacy to leave behind and yeah it's, it's a bittersweet day to be a horror fan but we just wanted to pay our respects and we thought this would be an appropriate tribute so Sid wherever you are I uh, hope you're having a lot of fried chicken. And gasoline. And gasoline. Yeah, yeah. And we're looking forward to seeing his final performance in Three From Hell. Yeah, we will do Devil's Rejects, like I said, later on and later next week before, because we are doing Three From Hell for, October, for 31 Days of Halloween. By the way, we're doing 31 Days of Halloween. The announcement video and the full list of movies will be in the description, because I'm a smarmy motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. And with all that out of the way, one more time, rest in peace, Sid Haig. Uh, it's a bittersweet day for the horror community. And with all that out of the way, booze and ghouls, um, we hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have and you haven't hit that subscriber button yet, please hit that subscriber button because we appreciate every subscriber we get. And with that, we wish you a good day, a good evening, and we'll talk to you guys real soon. Bye, guys. Cheers. Rest in peace, Sid. Most of all, fuck you!